By week 22, the LA Galaxy had surpassed the Sounders in the standings following a great run of results. The two teams would clash head to head in the Home Depot Center with second place in the West on the line. It's a very big game, you know, we're right neck and neck with them at the table. And so um, that's enough motive for us to go there and try and get the win, you know. And so I think we've got a work week is definitely going to help because um, we can work on a few things, you know, iron out a few kinks and stuff like that. But at um, the end of the day, we know what it's going to take, you know. And so this week's about um, getting back to what we did well earlier in the season. He's number one pick for a reason. Uh, he's a great player on the ball. Um, he's got a lot of speed. Uh, he's, he's a smart player. Um, he makes good runs and um, with, with his speed, you just try to try to keep a step ahead of him. Two of the defenders were in my rookie class. You know, they're rookies and so um, they're good players, college players and stuff. But I already you know know in my head what I need to do. You know, I won't say right now, but okay. I already know in my head what I need to do. The game did not disappoint, and neither did Zaquani, as he scored the game's first goal, which proved to be the winner for Seattle. It was a straightforward goal. I think um, there was a good ball over the top. Maybe James Riley, through to Brad Evans, made a good run, you know, and he ran past this guy. And um, I saw him lift his head up, you know, and so I saw the defenders get drawn toward Montero. So I had space in the back post, and I made a good run. He makes a good ball, and then it's just about, you know, making a good contact, keeping the ball down, and managed to do that, and saw it go in. It was a big relief, you know, it felt good. It was a great goal, great run by both of their players. I. So obviously two v one in the box with me, so I had to I had to pick the man closest to the to the goal, and I did that. And uh, Evans played a ball back post and found Zagwani for or a goal. In the 16th minute, the home team went down a man when the player with the highest profile on the pitch was shown a red card. You can beat anybody on any given day, so uh, they came out confident. Uh, we went down a man uh, pretty early, so that forced us uh, into kind of a shell a little bit, and uh, we weren't able to get out of that after the first goal. In the 54th minute, Seattle all but put the game on ice with a Freddie Montero goal that resulted from a corner kick. I think it kills the game at 1-0. Galaxy will be thinking, oh, they're still in it. Um, one goal and they're back to 1-1. One, one. But um, when you get two, they managed to score three to win the game. And so um, what it done was it killed it. And um, for us, it was good because um, when they brought on Landon Donovan, obviously, that's a key player for them. And so the crowd was lifted, that kind of stuff, you know, we had a bit of pressure. But um, if you score the second goal, then it's a mountain to climb for them. And when we did that, we felt very good. And then it definitely did kill the game. The win was the first in over a month for Seattle. And it came without Freddie Jungberg. He's a big, big player, big important player. But like we said, you know, I think almost from game to game, our team changes, you know, for one reason or another, you know. And so um, we've learned to play with different guys, different guys coming in, you know, we all train together at the same level, same intensity. And so if a player like Freddie's missing, then, you know, someone has to step in and do the job, you know. And like you saw today, it's a team effort. We've got a whole squad, 24 guys, different parts of the season you get caught up on, you know. And so the guys who came in today did their job, you know. Obviously, hopefully we'll welcome him back soon. He's a good player. but. Um, it's a case where if one player is missing, then someone you know who's at the same level in the sense that he brings their own style comes in and does a good job. Earlier that day, DC United and Toronto FC battled at BMO Field with third place in the East on the line. Chris Pontius was unable to play due to injury, and his team felt his absence. The Reds were able to snap a five-game winless streak, winning 2-0 to jump ahead of DC in the playoff race. That DC game was important for us as we had that it was the first time where we had a week to focus on the game and I think it showed because during the week uh, we had solid practices throughout the whole week and we got back into that rhythm where we had uh, Wednesdays off and we could recover a little bit, you know, but we, we, we brought our A game and I think uh, it kind of took a toll on them as well, the heat, but um, we had a young side and that had a lot of energy in their legs and we were able to grind out a result, that was good. We would have been fighting a big uphill battle if we didn't win that one, especially with the the amount of road games you have coming up, having an Eastern Conference game at home, it really was imperative to get three points and uh, we did that. We, we had a good showing and I think um, from start to finish we, we played a, a well rounded game, both offensively and defensively. We were very compact, didn't give them many chances and they're typically a team that has a pretty high octane offense and we were able to quiet them and get two goals of our own. So on the whole a very, a very good um, showing at home and uh, it's a good way to kind of good platform to build on for the rest of the year. Next time on Rookie Life, the playoff hunt 